So, John, you just gave a very interesting talk about how humans might be uniquely susceptible to the bad effects of eating red meat, both causing inflammation and cancer. What's special about humans that might make us vulnerable when other kind of primates might not be vulnerable? That was the question that first intrigued me because as a biologist, I take it as a given that humans may look different from other animals on the outside. On the inside, when we look at the chemicals and the molecules, we're just another animal, nothing fundamentally different. And this seemed to be a case where that wasn't true. So we've been eating red meat for a long time. Mm -hmm. How could it possibly still be dangerous for us? Indeed, our bodies, when we say red meat, that basically means mammal meat, okay. which is exactly what our bodies are made of. All our muscles are red meat. Okay. We don't call it meat. That's not a nice thing to say or think about. Let's go right on from there. We will. Um, so it's puzzling how this could be harmful to us uh, and exclusively to humans. It turns out that the answer is it involves some complicated biochemistry and involves one way that humans are different from all other animals and all other mammals. So there's one particular sialic acid that's different in humans than in all other primates. Is that right. right? Right. And you had a specific idea about why a mutation happened that made our sialic acid different. This is something that sits on the surface of cells, right? That's right. So what, what do you think was the evolutionary force that accounted for our sialic acid being different? Well, this is not my idea, but idea that I found in published papers, which is that uh, infectious diseases in order to do what they do, they have to get inside our cells. So when, when uh, a disease organism arrives at the outside of a cell, it needs to find a molecule that it can recognize and bind to, like a key fits a lock, so that it can get into the cell where it can live and reproduce. And humans have a molecule, the one particular disease organism uses. The disease organism is malaria. When it when malaria gets inside our body, it, it reaches a cell surface and it attaches to something called a sialic acid, which you mentioned, and that allows it to gain entry into the cell. So we should get rid of sialic acid. That's, that is what happened in our evolutionary history, almost as though evolution were, a, were a, 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 some sort of a designer so our ancestors, chimpanzee-like creatures, had a different sialic acid that made them vulnerable to a different kind of malaria? That's that correct. Right? That's correct. There was all, all mammals were the same, and this, this parasite was able to infect all mammals. But humans became different when they changed their sialic acid. So we got an advantage from not having that kind of malaria That's anymore. That's right. The malaria had the key to open that lock, so we changed the lock. And a different kind of malaria evolved to take advantage just of us then. That's right. Especially nasty kind of malaria. And the, the, the malaria that we have today is, is that new type. The old one that bothered us years ago, because we've changed through evolution, no longer infects us. It only infects some of non-human So, so this mutation gave us advantages by letting us escape the kind of malaria that infects other primates. Um, and at least until the new kind of malaria came along, that was just a pure good thing. Absolutely. But you're saying this also has other disadvantages of some sort, especially when we eat meat from other mammals that have slightly different sialic acid. That's right. What happens when we eat meat that has a slightly different form of sialic acid? Well, when we, when we digest that meat, we, we take the molecules out to use, and some of these molecules, particularly the sialic acid molecules, are almost exactly like human. So that goes right through the gut wall and gets absorbed the it way it is? It can be absorbed. It can be used as though it were the, the human molecule. It's close enough. So does it become integrated into our cells or something? It does. Or? It actually becomes part of our cells. Really? And yet it's still a molecule that came from a different species and in some ways is a subtle difference. So usually when there are molecules from other species in us, our immune system mounts an attack. And that's what happens. So we take these molecules from other mammal species, we build them into our cells. Our body builds these molecules into our cells. Not on purpose, it just happens. It happens automatically. Mm -hmm. So is there evidence that this actually might cause problems for us? Even though these cells have become, even though these molecules have become from our diet, have become part of our cells, they have subtle differences that the immune system recognizes 
and launches an attack against. So now the immune system is attacking molecules that have become part of us, so the immune system is attacking our own body. So this would seem to cause inflammation, exactly. which is generally a bad thing. Yes. Unless, except for when it's useful. It's, it's very useful when it can defeat an infection and then stop. But if it goes on for too long, it causes medical problems, including cancer. Okay. Chronic inflammation is very dangerous over the long term. So you described a system where when we eat meat from other animals, vertebrate animals, red meat you call it, um, that just cranks up our inflammatory system because there's one molecule that's just a little bit different from our molecules. That sounds like a bad thing, but it might also have advantages. Is that right? It might be a good thing because different, different people live in, under different conditions. It's hard to be adapted to all these different conditions. So there are a lot of infections that we get from other animals, especially domesticated animals that have lived with us for tens of thousands of years. That's Is that right. right? That's right. In villages and families where people are keeping domesticated mammals, they're living in close proximity to them and they can share diseases with them. So, so people who have domesticated mammals are exposed to a lot more disease. They need a lot more protection. By, so it sounds like system. you're saying that eating meat, is, that the whole system is not designed, we can never use a designed word, but eating meat ramps up the inflammatory system in a way that's useful, especially for those people who have access to eating meat. Is that what you're saying? That is what I'm saying, yes. Mammal meat in our diet signals, is a signal, a reliable signal that we're living with mammals, we're subjected to a lot of their diseases, so we need extra protection. I see. So, so this seems like a classic opportunity to ask whether this is likely a system shaped by natural selection specifically to ramp up inflammation when we're living with other vertebrate animals that we eat, or whether that extra inflammation is just an accidental byproduct of happening to eat meat from other animals with a different sialic acid. Is there a way to distinguish those two possibilities? Well, I think it's it's not uh, right the, not the right dichotomy. It's not really an either or situation. Okay. The way natural selection works is that something happens just by accident, and it has the consequence that if it assists in survival and reproduction, it will be preserved and become part of the species. So there might be some advantages from eating red meat in populations that are living with other animals and that gives an advantage. So it, it just... As well as a cost. It just, it just by accident gives advantages. But not by accident is the fact that the people who receive those advantages will be the people who survive, reproduce, and pass on that trait to the next generation. So one of the tests seems to me to be whether populations that have eaten a lot of meat over the past you know, 10,000 years have more of these tendencies than populations that haven't eaten much meat. That's correct. There are populations that don't have domesticated mammals. Mm -hmm. They only eat plants or they only eat uh, wild fish, for example. Are they different in ways that are consistent with your hypothesis? That's the question I would like to answer next. So that's your paper that you're working on now, is that right? Correct. So I have a hypothesis that makes predictions. The next step is test those predictions. The hypothesis predicts that if you go look at those people who those groups of people who have never lived with domesticated mammals, you will not find the same kinds of adaptations in these sialic acids. Fascinating.